What up? It's Sam from Hi-Viz LEDs. Today I'm going to introduce you to my friend Zach, and we're going to do some modifications to Zach's head in just a minute that will help us understand how light hits firemen's eyes and how we can reduce glare on the fire scene. So one of the most common things that we get asked at trade shows and around the industry is how do we reduce the amount of light that hits us in the eyes? So one of the things that's really cool, if you look at Zach's face here, you'll see how his eyebrow is up top, and then his eyeball is sucked back into the socket just behind that area. So anatomically, the shape of the human face allows the top of your eyebrow, your hair, the fireman's helmet to act almost like a sun visor and keep light out of your eyes. Now the problem is when lights are mounted low on a fire truck, they shine you right in the face and that glare is something that a lot of times causes problems on the fire ground. So how do you address that? You can either mount lights higher on the fire truck on the body or you can mount them on poles or you can put them on light towers. And this isn't every light on the fire truck, but we're talking as a general package. If you're trying to reduce glare, using elevation to your advantage is the best way to do it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take Zach's eyes and replace them with photometric light sensors. And what's really cool is this little device can sense how much light hits this target. And my hypothesis is that as the light goes up in the air, we're gonna see a reduction in light hitting his eyes and more light or the same amount of light hitting the area where we're working, which in fact reduces glare. So anyway, let's see if we can quantify this. We'll catch you outside. Well, see you later, eyeballs. Here we go. One eye down, one eye to go. Looking pretty darn good, if you ask me. All right, we're finished. Here we go, Zach's got two eyes. Each one's got its own independent light sensor. And what this will let us do is figure out how much light's actually hitting his eyes versus hitting him from the top of the head and being shielded by the shape of his skull. All right, so we made it outside. So the way we have this thing set up is I've got a pallet on a forklift with the Guardian mounted to the front of it. That's gonna shine light down and out all over the fire scene. This simulates the light, whether it's on a body or up in the air. On the ground, we have a sensor mounted on a set of turnout gear, and this turnout gear simulates anything fire ground equipment. It could be chainsaws or whatever. The next thing we've got is Zach with the light sensors in his eyes. So what's going to happen is this forklift is going to go up, and we'll calculate how much light hits the work surface, and then we'll calculate how much light hits the guy in the eyes, and we'll be able to identify what's occurring on the fire ground to see if elevation really does make a difference in reducing glare. So let's get this thing started. All right, so what's really cool is now you can see it graphing along. The red and blue line, that's the left and right eye, and the green line, now with more light on target than the fireman's eyes, we've effectively reduced glare. So this is pretty cool how this all works, but what you'll see is that elevating a fixture definitely reduces the amount of light hitting a fireman in the eyes. All right, well, next up, we're gonna throw a hard hat on old Zachary and see what happens next. Check this out, this is really cool. So what you'll see here, this is where the shadow is now cast. So his eyes are completely in a shadow based on this little short brim of a hat. Now imagine that's the front edge of a fire helmet, it's the same sort of deal. When you're able to elevate the light fixture, you use that hat brim to your advantage and you keep the light out of the fireman's eye. So what you'll see here is an even sharper cutoff. Right there is where the light fixture changed. Whoops, that's where I just walked over top of the sensor. But you'll see right here, this is the difference in light elevation. We're able to get such a sharp cutoff using the brim of a hat. You'll see here, we've got almost no light hitting the fireman in the eye at all. Meanwhile, we've got an elevated amount of light on the target. That's our goal. All right, next up, we're gonna use a baseball cap and see if we can shorten this up anymore. What I wanna see is I wanna see if we can make this a steeper cutoff using that brim and making the time elevation shorter so that that light fixture, the lower the light fixture is, the faster we get the cutoff. And that's what I'm hoping for with the brim of the hat. The old baseball cap. This is really cool. What you'll see here, check this out. We've got almost no light hitting the fireman's eye. This is a very quick cutoff, and you'll see right about here, this is where just the natural elevation of the forklift, and in almost no time, we've gone from glare in the fireman's eye to no glare at all in the fireman's eye 
with more light on target than it is in the, in the guy's head. So what does this all tell us? Well, when you look at a fire truck scene lighting package, it's more than just taking a scene light and bolting it to the side of the body. What you really want to do is look at the total comprehensive ecosystem and figure out, do you have enough elevation? Do you have enough body lights? Do you have enough 12 volts? Do you have enough 110? And the best way to do that is to use some of the principles we've learned here using our lighting equipment here in the lab and work with a lighting consultant like one of the fire tech team members to come up with a package that effectively illuminates your fire scene, reduces glare in the fireman's eyes, and helps you do your job safer at night. For more information, check us out online at highvisleds.com or go to our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash scene lighting. We'll see you later.